Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode. I am so grateful that you are joining us today, whether that be on a podcast platform, through my blog on my website, or through YouTube. I am so grateful that you are here joining us today. Today, we are going to be talking about different types of lighting and livestock photography and why it is so important. So just a few brief overview things about kind of like what we're going to hit today. This should only be about a 10, 15 minute episode really quick for you guys. And whether you're a livestock producer or a photographer yourself, I really think that this episode is going to be beneficial for you because you're going to be able to understand if you're a producer, why photographers do what they do and how to set up your pen best. And then if you're a photographer, how to work in a pin throughout the day. So we're gonna be going over the different types of lighting. So natural lighting, artificial lighting, and then we're gonna go over the impacts of livestock photography, of lighting on livestock photography and why it is so important. We're gonna go over practical tips and tricks to um, get the best lighting possible. We're gonna go over some different photo examples and then we're also gonna go over like different challenges and solutions to those challenges if they come up because as we all know, Photographing livestock can be a whirlwind. So we're going to start first in kind of like why everything is so important. Why, why do we need to care about this lighting? Why is it important? What makes, does it really even make a difference in the long run of things? And I'm here to tell you, yes, it does. It truly, truly, truly makes a difference in how these photos are going to turn out. I do not care if you are taking photos on your iPhone or if you are taking photos on a $10,000 camera. Lighting is going to make or break these photos for you. And the biggest thing about it is it is going to be able to actually depict the animal properly when you take this photo. If you have an all black cow and you don't utilize shadows and lighting properly, you could completely darken that animal up where they're not gonna be able to see any features of that animal. And that is really impactful when it comes to bot potential buyers or whether you're using it for marketing purposes in any way, shape or form, people want to be able to see the actual definition and depth and the hip structure and everything like that in an animal that if you don't utilize pro lighting properly, they're not going to be able to see it. So let's go over the two different types of lighting that you have available to you. There's natural lighting and then there's artificial lighting. Artificial lighting is what I'm using here right now. It is going to be my um, two individual setups that I have. And then I also have artificial lighting on top of my camera right now that is a continuous light. I use that continuous light for videos. If I'm doing videos inside somewhere where I have not the best lighting, I'm going to use that continuous light because it gives off a lot. I can change the color of it. I can change um, just a lot of different things with that light to make it function properly for how I need it to. I'm also going to be utilizing a flash on top of my camera whenever I'm doing photos inside or outside. Even if I'm outside taking photos and utilizing natural lighting as my main lighting source, I'm still going to have a flash on top of my camera to be able to utilize that in case I get in a pinch where an animal completely sets up perfectly and they're not in the correct spot. And we will talk about that more here in a bit. The biggest thing that I suggest that if you take anything out of this, there is this app that I use as a photographer called suncalc.net. It's free to use and super handy. You put in your address. And so you put in your address and then put in the date. And what I do is for any of my livestock sessions that I have coming up, I put in the address of the ranch. I put in the date that I'm going to be there and you could go 20 years in advance if you wanted to. And it is going to show you the sunrise, the sunset, and the exact path and direction that the sun is going to take from that point, that pin that you put. When it does this, it allows me to send a really, really great overview to my customers of, hey, this is the direction that this sun is going to take. I'm going to get here at this time. We're going to start at this time. I'm going to start in this position of this pin. But as the day moves and as the sun moves forward, we're going to have to adjust this pin. We're going to have to adjust where I'm standing because I cannot stand in the same spot at sunset that I am standing in at sunrise. Obviously, there's two different opposite ends that the sun is rising and setting on. So you're going to have to move as the photographer because you want that sun directly behind you. You want it to be the sun 
you, and then that animal right in front of you. That way the shadow that they're casting is almost like a perfect shadow of them on the ground. If they are angled too much or anything like that, that's when you start getting those harsh shadows and just really funky lighting because if they're angled just a little bit off. You're gonna have a front end that is completely visible, but then you're gonna have a hip and a back end that is completely shaded because of where the sun's at. So it's really important to remember it goes you, the sun, you, and then that animal and try and get that animal as well set up right in that position as possible. I completely understand that that is not always possible. It simply is not always possible, especially if you're doing off haltered animals and um, like cattle or especially sale cattle that um, if someone's having a big production sale and these calves have been in a feedlot their whole life, they, they're not going to do what you need them to all the time and you're going to have to make do with what you have. And that is why I suggest having an on-camera flash available to you to utilize in addition to that natural lighting. So that on-camera flash, I have it on my camera at all times when I'm in a picture pen. And even when the sun is in the correct spot, I still find myself using it sometimes just as an added, like, okay, just in case I need a little extra light on this animal, I have the option, okay? And so what this on-flash, on-camera flash is going to do for you is if that animal sets up really great, but they're not in the perfect position, it's gonna allow you to still snap that photo and on the back end, when you are processing that image, you may have to do a little bit of extra editing, but it's not gonna be anything, anything in comparison to what it would have been if you didn't have that on-camera flash on there. And there are a lot of different ways. There's one of these times that I'm gonna do an episode about editing and backend process and all of those things to kind of talk about how, you know, if I do get in a pinch and I have to take, just snap this photo, what do I do if their entire hip is completely shadowed? Or, hey, I want to remove this object from the background. Or, hey, one of my fitters accidentally nicked or like cut into her top line when they were clipping her out because she decided to fly, swat a fly or something. Can we get that fixed? And it's what I'll go through all of that. But for now, just remember that it is possible to fix those things on the back end. It requires more work and a little bit more time, but it is possible if you do get into pinch with that lighting. When you use artificial lighting. It's not gonna be something that you typically use um, outside in a sail pen with cattle. Obviously, like it's, with as much space as you need for cattle, it's not really, um, it doesn't make sense for you to use artificial stand by themselves lighting in a livestock pen um, other than the on-camera flash that you have. But if you were doing photos for sheep or goats um, or pigs, those can be done indoor or outdoor, depending on the weather, day, if it's cloudy or sunny outside, what the producers that you are working for have set up, all of those different things. But one example is if you are doing an indoor shoot at a producer's ranch where they have um, like a stand set up inside, but it's really dark inside of that barn. These two individual lights right here are going to give you a studio feel where you're going to be able to position them around the animal to get all of those shadows taken care of as you need them to. And luckily with sheep and goats, most of the time you're going to be able to position those animals kind of at your will to be able to uh, get them in the correct position that you need to. So let's kind of talk about um, lighting and how it impacts these features on the cattle. So the biggest thing is lighting is going to be your main factor that highlights the features of these animals. It is going to give you depth perception. It's gonna be able to see you the full structure of these animals, everything like that. And it's also going to, um, we kind of talked about managing shadows and highlights, and then it's gonna create a natural and appealing look for these animals. I cannot tell you how many times I have taken photos and nine times out of 10, the ones that look more natural, less posed, less um, produced do better because A, it's a trust thing. People trust those photos better that like if you are taking them in a nice freshly cut green paddock, those photos are going to do a lot better than if you have a perfectly posed lit setup along the side of your barn or something like that. And 
you know what? Both of those photos are probably going to do great in the long run, but trying to get the natural aspect of it. And that's why we try to use natural lighting as much as possible. Even if I'm doing sheep or goats and it's a nice day outside, utilize that sun because the sun is going to be your best friend, especially just like it's, it just looks a lot better in the back end of things and your camera's going to work better, everything like that. So the next thing I want to talk about is different challenges that you can face as a livestock photographer, especially in the heat of sale season, which here in the Midwest is definitely going to be in the fall and into early winter where Kansas likes to dump snow on us randomly and just not be the most cooperating as far as the weather goes and how that can impact your photos and what to do in those situations. So for me personally, as a photographer, my kind of golden rule is that as long as I can still see the animal through my camera, I can still take its photo. So I have, um, I'll have assistants throughout the day that either like they can sometimes hold umbrellas for me and um, I've had to shoot in the rain or in the snow or things like that. And like those, those are situations where it's possible, not ideal. If you are shooting your own livestock at your house, I would highly, highly recommend that you try and wait until it's a nice day outside. Even if it's in the middle of winter and you've got snow on the ground or something like that, that is still completely fine. That's still a nice day. If that sun is shining and you're able to clearly see that animal, then you're going to be all right. Just remember in those situations, it have some patience, wait it out. It will all clear itself up. And then for me as a photographer, I always, if it doesn't clear itself up and we get ourselves caught in some type of blizzard or something, then I, as a photographer, always block off one weekend per month where they're like my makeup weekends or things like that. Um, where if weather happens, we get snowed out, something crazy happens, I'm able to reschedule my clients to those weekends. And whether that be for you as a photographer, if you can't block off an entire week and you block off a half a day or you block off one day a month or one day every two months or things like that, which it can get kind of difficult with sale livestock to be able to maneuver that, but just try and be as agile and flexible as possible. And remember that no matter what the lighting situation is outside, you're going to be able to make it work. It's lighting is your best friend and also your worst enemy all in one. But just remember that whatever you are faced with in that situation, you're going to be able to figure it out. And then that's kind of the gist of what I wanted to talk about. So we kind of went over the natural lighting, artificial lighting, why it's important, um, positioning of where you need to be as a photographer and um, some different tips and tricks with that. The biggest thing that I recommend you taking away from this episode, if you take nothing else other than my dog being silly over here, is suncalc.net, download that app, utilize it, it will be your best friend. And then the next thing is that it's a sandwich. It goes the sun, you, and then that animal and try and get that animal as perfectly um, parallel with the sun as you possibly can and your photos are gonna turn out absolutely astronomically better than they ever have looked before. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for another episode. I really appreciate your time being here and everyone's support in this venture that I am on. And until next time, friends, we'll talk later. Bye.